Good day welcome back to the R channel. It's me again teacher Yang. For today's lesson let's talk about course of infection by stages. This life changing lesson is about the course of infection by stages. Read it very carefully and understand how infection manifests through its various stages. When a person is sick, the first stage of infection is incubation. It is the period starting from the entry of the pathogen until the appearance of the first sign. For example, chicken pox, it takes two to three weeks of incubation. For common cold one two days of incubation, influenza takes one to three days and 15 to 18 days for mumps. The second stage is called the prodromal stage which starts from the onset of non-specific signs and symptoms such as fever. Illness stage begins when more specific signs and symptoms appear. For example, common cold is characterized by sore throat, sinus congestion, rhinitis, mumps manifested by earache, high fever, and salivary gland swelling. The last stage of infection is an interval when acute symptoms of infection disappear. The length of recovery depends on the severity of infection and the sick person's general state of health. Recovery may take several days, two months and is called the convalescence stage. By understanding the chain of infection, the sick person must intervene to prevent the infection from developing any further levels of prevention of getting sick. What is primary prevention? They CT IVITIES are done to prevent one from having the disease. Examples GETTING immunized, PATING a balanced diet, GETTING enough sleep, AVOIDING vices, dot e abuse yourself by doing the lot of work that can cause sickness. IN order not to get sick of loose bowel movement, practice washing your hands with clean water and soap before and after it is used. IMMUNIVATIONS are probably the best example of primary prevention and health education to all. What is secondary prevention? They CT IVITIES are done to prevent further damage when the disease has already started. Examples PROMPT diagnosis and treatment. Yes, so if a child is diagnosed with loose bowel movement, he must follow the doctor's instructions very strictly. This is to prevent LBM from becoming dysentery or even worse. SCREENING tests are excellent examples of secondary prevention. By diagnosing diseases quickly. What is tertiary prevention? The HE focus is on rehabilitating the sick person so as to prevent long-term complications of the disease. Example, if the child is suffering dysentery, he must be close monitored because he slash she can die of dehydration and complications. He can be confined in a hospital for strict monitoring. TERTIARY prevention include the follow-up and monitoring of all prescribed medications to make sure the patient is taking them. Therapy to help restore functions in debilitating diseases and any medical procedure means to treat or cure the disease itself. Read and learn the following in order to avoid and prevent encountering them. Bacteria one celled organisms that is found almost everywhere. Example strep throat, tuberculosis, sinus infections. Virus extremely small organisms that consist of a protein coat and some genetic materials. For example cold, influenza, fungus. A fungus relies on other living or dead organisms to survive. Yeast, molds, and mildews are included in this group. Example athlete's foot, ringworm, protozoan and a single-celled organism, much more complex than a bacterium. Protozoal infections usually come from infected water or food example amoebic dysentery parasite an organism that lives in a host organism draws nourishment from a host some may be very large for example tapeworm malaria ringworm of the body tinea corporis ringworm usually causes a very itchy rash it often makes a pattern in the shape of a ring but not always sometimes it is just a red itchy rash the outer ring is very reddish and another ring in the middle is reddish too the in between is whitish to prevent ringworm, keep your skin clean and dry. Change your socks and underwear at least once a day. Wear loose-fitting cotton clothing. Avoid tight underwear, pants, and pantyhose. Always dry yourself completely after showers or baths. After drying your skin with a towel, allow your skin to air dry before putting your clothes on. You can also use a hair dryer, set on a cool setting, to dry your skin. Do not share clothing, sports equipment 
towels, or sheets. If you think you have been exposed to ringworm, wash your clothes in hot water with fungus-killing fungicidal soap. Wear slippers or sandals in locker rooms, showers, and public bathing areas. Shower and shampoo thoroughly after any sport that requires skin-to-skin -skin contact. Acne has always been a common skin problem among teenagers and adults. This disease is also known to cause stress or embarrassment on its sufferers. Thus, acne has become an almost dreaded skin condition. So if you don't want to experience having a hard time dealing with the possibility of acne growth on your skin, the best thing that you can do is to learn how to take care of your skin. Acne is usually caused by the following factors, dirt, excess oil, and unhealthy lifestyle. Prevention is, in washing your face, make sure that you use a gentle soap or cleanser that matches your skin type to effectively eliminate sweat, excess oil, and dirt from your face. Otherwise your skin pores will clog and soon pimples might appear. Moreover, in drying your skin, make sure that you use only clean towels. Wash acne prone areas only twice a day. Washing removes excess oil and dead skin cells. But too much washing can irritate the skin. Wash areas with a gentle cleanser and use soil-free, water-based skin care products. Avoid heavy makeup. Choose powder cosmetics over cream products because they're less irritating. Remove makeup before going to bed. Going to sleep with cosmetics on your skin can clog tiny openings of the hair follicles pores. Also, be sure to throw out old makeup and clean your cosmetic brushes and applicators regularly with soapy water. Wear loose-fitting clothing. Tight-fitting clothing traps heat and moisture and can irritate your skin. Also, whenever possible, avoid tight-fitting straps, backpacks, helmets, or sports equipment to prevent friction against your skin. Shower after exercising or doing strenuous work. Oil and sweat on your skin can trap dirt and bacteria. Athlete's foot is caused by a fungus that grows on or in the top layer of skin. Fungi plural of fungus grow best in warm, wet places, such as the area between toes. It looks like a burned skin because it has scales and it is reddish and itchy. Athlete's foot wear flip-flops in affected areas. Use antifungal spray or powders on shoes and feet. Dry the feet and between the toes first after a shower to prevent spread to other parts of the skin. Avoid tight or closed footwear especially in warm climates. Change socks daily. Cotton socks keep the feet cooler. Wash towels daily. Warts are the most common of dermatological complaints. Three out of four people will develop a wart peruca vulgaris at some time in their lives. Warts are slightly contagious. And you can spread them to other parts of your body by touching them or shaving around infected areas. Children and young adults are prone to getting warts because their defense mechanisms may not be fully developed. But it is possible to get a wart at any age. Warts are caused by the human papilloma virus HPV, which enters the skin through a cut or scratch and causes cells to multiply rapidly. Usually, warts spread through direct contact. Each person responds differently. And not everyone exposed to HPV will develop a wart. They can be all over the parts of the body. They are small black or brownish hard-grown skin. They can become bigger especially when they are always touched. Prevention To reduce your risk of plantar warts avoid direct contact with warts. This includes your own warts. Keep your feet clean and dry. Change your shoes and socks daily. Don't go barefoot in public areas. Wear sandals or flip-flops in public pools and locker rooms. Don't pick at warts. Picking may spread the virus. Don't use the same file, pumice stone, or nail clipper on your warts as you use on your healthy skin and nails. Wash your hands carefully after touching your warts. Jaw itch is characterized by an itchy, red rash on the genital, thinner thighs and buttocks. It occurs in warm, moist areas of the body and is common in athletes and people who are obese or perspires a great deal. Jaw itch groin infection Wash the groin daily. Dry the skin carefully after bathing. Do not dry the feet before the groin to reduce the risk of spreading the fungi from the feet. Change underwear daily. Wash towels daily. To test your learning, let's do this. Carefully read the questions and choose the correct answer from the choices and write the letter of your choice on the blanks provided at the right side.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share, like and click subscribe for more upcoming videos.